Well, hello everybody and welcome to the new Living the RV Dream YouTube channel. Uh, I am Traveling Robert, Robert Morales, for those of you who are new. And, um, and this channel basically is going to be a companion to my Living the RV Dream with Traveling Robert podcast. And here what I'm going to do, whenever I do an interview and I have video of that interview, I'm going to post it right here. So please subscribe and share with your friends and um, give me the thumbs up that, you, that everybody does. And of course, they click on the bell so you get notified. And um, whenever I have a video interview, it should come out every Friday at the same time as the podcast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simulcast them every Friday at 6 a.m. Eastern uh, time. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, here's the, the interview with Mike and Jennifer Wendland of the RVLifestyle.com, an RV Lifestyle podcast. And um, yeah, enjoy. This is Living the RV Dream, episode 141 for Friday, May 1st, 2020. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. All right, today our guests are Mike and Jennifer Wendland of RV Lifestyle, the RV Lifestyle podcast and RVLifestyle.com. And uh, it's, it's my honor and my pleasure to have you on the, on the podcast and uh, on, on the YouTube channel. Well, it's great to be with you. Really it great. is. Hey, I haven't what, seen you in a while. <laughs> I know, I haven't seen you. Well, it was, we, of course, we, we saw you, I saw you live in person in back, back in the Tampa RV show. In Tampa. January, right. yeah. uh, where are you guys right now? Where are you coming from? We're at our condo in uh, Florida, uh, up in the Panhandle, uh, along the Emerald Coast region near Destin, Florida. Yeah, man, I envy you guys. I I love that area. Actually, I found out about Camp Golf because of you guys. I, I was listening to your podcast uh, one day, and, and you guys were yeah. broadcasting live from like, I, and I and I got so envious that I I looked uh, and it's not a it's not a cheap place, <laughs> but no, it's, man, it's, it's 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 a privilege to be camping there right next to the to the and on the sand basically. Yeah, yeah, literally on the sand. Uh, like by it. the way, I want to congratulate you on 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I know you reached that milestone recently. We kind of reached it together. And yeah. um, I wanted to ask you, because you have probably one of the most, if not the most professionally produced podcast uh, in, in, in this genre, in our niche. Um, and I, I know you, you, you were in journalism before. What, what, did, what did you do before uh, this phase of your life the, as a podcaster and YouTube personality? I, I, was, I was a... I was a reporter, a journalist, and uh, I was an investigative reporter. I, I did crime and corruption, and then I uh, ended up specializing in technology. I still do a weekly report on all the NBC stations for every NBC station in the country uh, on technology. But um, we just got kind of burned out by it and thought we were going to retire. That was our thought, you know. And then you got bored, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, we I bought an RV, and uh, I had a convinced Jennifer that this is what we wanted and to do. It took him a couple of years to convince me that that there was enough space in the class B for two people and a 65 pound dog. But uh, as soon as we got the RV and we started traveling, it was just a natural thing to uh, tell others about what we were seeing and to encourage them to come see it as well. So we started a blog and uh, it was mostly for our family and friends. And some of my friends in the media picked it up and it, it got circulated. This was that back in 2012. And then uh, we got a couple of people who wanted to sponsor us. And then we started a podcast. And that's been, uh, well, almost 300 episodes. Uh, we record tomorrow, or the day after we record this interview with you. And that'll be episode uh, 292. So we've been doing that. And um, the Huggins uh, actually were very helpful for us when we started the podcast. Uh, in fact, all the equipment that I got, I got based on their recommendations, at least first. Now we've got new equipment, but uh, they were just very big uh, helps in getting us uh, going on the podcast. Well, that's how I first found out about you guys with, through the through the Huggins. I, I used to listen to their podcast religiously for, for years and uh, probably five years ago or so that they interviewed yeah. you guys on the, the Tampa show, was it? Yeah. Yeah, it's about about five six years ago now. I think mm -hmm. that, that it's been there. But uh, and then you know we started. We came to YouTube fairly late. I was only using YouTube then just so I could embed a video in a blog report. But 
that took off and uh, we really love doing the YouTube. I think that's our favorite thing. It is making videos, sharing what we see, what we find. Like you do. And, uh, and from that, we decided that, uh, you know, so many people have gone the routes of Patreon and different, different areas to generate revenue. And, um, you know, it was all at the mercy of somebody else. You know, if somebody shuts down or if YouTube changes a, a, an algorithm or Facebook changes something, you're kind of at their mercy. And so we started writing books, uh, short seven-day travel adventure guides. And we've now done seven of them and have about 20 more that we'll be putting out. And that has really been fun. We've really enjoyed doing that. That's what we we're doing. In fact, we were just finishing up one in Florida when this shutdown happened. And uh, we ended up staying at the condo here in Florida because it would be crazy to go back to Michigan, which is where we're, our full-time home is, and it'd be shut down in the cold and snow up there. Yeah. So we joined Florida. Yeah. Well, Florida is getting kind of hot and muggy, but, but it's, it's, it's still a good place to be right now. It looks like yep. Michigan is going to be shut down for months if you listen to the news. <laughs> I know. We've got a crazy governor up there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know when Michigan's going to open up again. So yeah. but we got to go back at least uh, check the house and then we can take off again. Okay. Going back to the moment when you decided to start RVing, what sparked the idea? Were you campers before you were RVing or you just jumped into this lifestyle just like that? Oh, yeah. We, uh, when we were... We we're first married. We had a little 13 foot Shasta travel trailer and we loved that. We would travel all over in that. And uh, then we started having children and uh, we went to a pop up camper. And every weekend, we, the three kids and the dog, we would go up to the woods and camp. Couldn't wait. Every weekend we were doing that. Kids grew up. And then we went to a tent. Just the two of us in Just the, the tent. Just the two of us two in the tent. Dog. Yeah. Uh, so we did that for years. And um, then another stage in our life, you know, when your parents get sick and you kind of stay close to home and help with your parents. And uh, then when our parents, my parents passed, we uh, got an RV and off we well, off we went. That was in 2012. And I thought I was kind of burned out with daily journalism. And so I thought I was going to retire. And little I, did I know that we would end up working harder now than we ever did back in the journalism days. Uh, but it doesn't feel like work when you're having so much fun. Exactly. And I always wanted to travel and see the States and Canada and all over. I, I, I love, there's no place that I think I don't want to go. And I, we've been very fortunate with our freelance work. We've uh, done a lot of traveling to the Middle East and Africa. And we have fortunate that we've been able to see so many places. And as a child, I would go through magazines and send in things to get free information on like Yellowstone and different places out West. And I just, I wanted to see everything. She's still like that. I, yeah, mean, I forgot uh, to ask Jennifer, were you a, a journalist as well? Yes. I, a producer, a producer. Yeah, the, the okay. background person, you know, not, <laughs> not in front of the camera. And now <laughs> she's my star. She's the star. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's fun to, to work together as a couple, I suppose. Yeah. Yes, and, it is. Um, and uh, let me ask you, why a class B? Well, right now you have a B plus, which is a little, actually, it's a kind of a misnomer. It's more like a C minus. It has more in common with a yeah. C than a B. That's what yeah. we call it, a C minus. It's really yeah. a C minus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I probably got that, that expression from you guys. Um, yeah. Why did you decide with this uh, type of rig? Because I would drive a B. It was between a B or an A when we first looked at RVs. And I said, Mike, I am not going to drive an A, but I will drive a B. And, so we got to be. And we've been with them ever since. We've had, um, I don't know, this is our sixth RV that we have. And uh, this is the first one we bought. Well, we know we bought our first one was a used one. And then we had a sponsor who provided us one. And then uh, we bought this one about a year and a half ago. And we'll, we'll uh, we probably will buy one more, I think. And um, it's kind of nice to try different ones out so that you know what you're talking about when people ask questions. But I don't ever see us go into anything bigger than, uh, than, a, than a B plus or a C. Um, we do like uh, a towable. We've thought very much about a towable at times, uh, mm -hmm. like, like you have. Um, Something I, could, I could, could see us maybe in that sometime. Yeah, I could see us in that too. I've 
I could see that because I I've always had a passion for airstreams. When I was a little tiny girl, <laughs> I'd see those big shiny silver airstreams. You hear that airstream? My eye. She's interested. It's kind of like a fishing lure or something. You know, it's always. It does look like know, a fishing lure. <laughs> <laughs> shiny <laughs> silver thing out there. But you know, there's not, there's so much to be said for being able to park, leave, and get in your truck and take off and go wherever. But we but we we love our bees. But you know, something small like we have uh, just the two of us and our dog and. Uh, He'd probably like bigger, but uh, uh, if the one we have now is big enough, I can a, I can always have a separate work area where we can edit. One person could be doing writing and the other can be editing or doing photos. And it's just a little bit more room in that uh, C that we have. Uh, we, we really like it. And uh, we may get another one. I don't know. That's... Uh, Would, would I, you go I, back to a proper bee, back to a bee, you know, having less tank, tank capacity mainly and, and a narrower... Buddy. I don't think I don't think he would. I, I might. I think you would. In a I would. Yeah. But so, he wouldn't. So if she does, I would. You know, how's that? You know how that <laughs> yeah, goes. <laughs> but but yeah, I don't I'm pretty spoiled now with what we it isn't we, that much we bigger. We are spoiled. No, it is much, much bigger inside. But I mean it's not that much, it doesn't feel bigger driving it, is I guess what I'm trying to say. And and uh, it's we, so much more room. Yeah, we have a real mattress, a Murphy bed that comes down, we have a shower, a dry shower. And we never used the shower, even though we had one in our bees. We That's never used it. because I wouldn't them. let him, because I was the one who had to wipe yeah, down were, the moisture. They were really I didn't want mold. And, and so in this one, it's a dedicated dry shower. And it's, and it's, it's a great. beautiful shower. Yeah. I mean, we are so spoiled. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, I don't see. You have a leisure travel van. You have the Wonder, is it? We have the, um, we have the uh, Unity. Unity, the Unity. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You did a video on it. I saw it a couple couple months ago. So I know you yeah. did one. I've, I've been to all the RV shows and I've done videos on <laughs> almost yeah, everything. I can yeah. even remember sometimes. I was too. We do the same thing. So I said, yeah, I saw your video. I said, I did one on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. What's what, what, so nice about the line? Unity FX is that we have a sofa in the, bed, in the back. It doesn't make into an official bed, but it is long enough that a person can sleep on it. And it's great for naps. <laughs> so... What are your thoughts on, on, on your thoughts on slides? Would you, do you think uh, this we have a slide on ours and it's only a small slide. Yeah, but no, I, I have no problems. With slides used to cause a lot of issues, but they've really improved the gearing. That's where most of the problems were. Some of them used to leak. They've, they've really fixed that. And uh, now this is the only one we've ever had with the slide. We've had it a little over a year, a year and a half. And, and, uh, but we've never had a, an ounce of problem with it. But we have to talk about the, the leveling system. Oh, my gosh. That's the other thing I like about it. That automatic leveling system. That is so good. She's the princess in the pea. You know, that old childhood story about yep. the princess. In the pea? And I could never get the bee a level. It was always off this way or the other way. I mean, we weren't way. even close. We we're talking back in. <laughs> yeah. Good enough. I mean, I can sleep, you know. <laughs> He can sleep standing up. But uh, this thing is so nice because you just push a button and it, And it automatically levels it. We really do like that. that is, that's such a luxury. Yeah. Well, whenever luxury. you guys want to trade, let me know. And we'll, uh, you can <laughs> uh, my trailer. <laughs> Just kidding. In my case, it's the opposite. I am the I am the one like the 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 prince in the, with the P. My wife couldn't couldn't care less if, if if the trailer was off level. But I'm like I have to be it has to be exact because you know. exactly. It's hard sometimes. It's I mean, hard. you know, and for us, we always would pull in in the middle of the night someplace because we're on our way somewhere and. We see something over here. We, you know what that's like, Robert. We we went to do a video there, and then going back around the way to the campground, we see something else. And then so most of the time, we always arrive after dark. And oh, you know, with the light, one person is showing shining the light, and usually it's starting to rain about then. And oh, it's it's crazy. So this is nice. You just pull in, push the slide out, put the emergency brake on, hit the auto levelers, you're good to go. All right, Robert's going to appreciate this. You, I'm sure you can't sleep with your feet higher than your head. I mean, that's just, I can't sleep that way. Yeah. You know, no, if, it, if it's like one degree, I'm fine, but anything more than that is probably. No, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta hang on the edge so you yeah. don't roll into each other. Maybe it's a I kind of like the rolling <laughs> Maybe into it's a each plot. other. That was fun, that was fun. <laughs> Um, where are you guys going next? I mean, I mean, uh, 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 whenever we're able to travel again, what's what's your short term? And maybe I, I know you're going back to Michigan. That's what you told me. But like in well, the summer or right, fall? Oh, right now, we were supposed to be in New Mexico and Arizona finishing up some research. We've got a, uh, our next travel guy. We got one of them coming out on Arizona this year. And that's 
only a few more, we need like two more stops that we, we need to finish researching. And we were going to also do New Mexico. That's where we were supposed to be right now. So I think that's probably um, not going to happen unless things really open up in the next week or so and, and the stars align right. So we'll probably go back to Michigan in uh, mid-May. You think spend a little time down here if anything opens up? Yeah, we may actually do some traveling here. We've got a couple of places that we want to do here. And Florida is such a great state. There's so many different ways to enjoy RVing. We've written three books on Florida now. So that's how much we've had fun with Florida. So we might do something here um, and then, but we want to get to Michigan. We got to just make sure the house is okay. That's the one downside about, because we're on the road about three quarters of the year. And when you leave your house a long time, you got to go check it. We have people who sometimes stay in it and we have lawn service, but we got to, we got to go check it. Would you ever then, consider full timing uh, at some point? No, yeah, yeah, we did. But that, that lasted when I said, Jen, have you ever considered full timing? And she said, no. Well, she said, that's not how she said it. She said, well, you would need a smaller RV because you'd be traveling alone. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to full time in a B. Yeah. So, that yeah. was the end of that. It and they love it. And, yeah, some people do it And, you know, I, okay, in my defense, we have two of our three children are in Michigan and four of our eight grandchildren are in Michigan. So Michigan has, you has know, a pretty has good roots, hold on us. And has, we have our roots there. But um, we do plan, uh, and, uh, and I, hopefully it's going to open up, and I don't, I don't see why this won't happen. We're uh, planning to leave late July, early August, go to the Canadian Rockies, and then we want to hit uh, Oregon, uh, come down or to, to Washington, Oregon coast, then into Northern California, making our way to the California RV show the first week of October. And then uh, from there, we were going to hit a couple of our favorite national parks out west as it starts to cool off a little bit. And then back to Michigan. We always spend between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, and the New Year uh, back in Michigan. So we get we get all of our medical checkups done one one same time every year. So we get them all done. We don't have to worry about that. Check them off the list, and then we can hit the road traveling. So that's kind of where we're hoping for the rest of the year. But boy, you just don't know. You don't know, you know? what this year is going to bring. We never saw this coming, did you? No, we, no. we're living in very strange times. Let me tell you. And, yeah. Um, and yeah. hopefully they, they'll open the Canadian border by the time you uh, you yeah. want to go to the Canadian. Yeah, that's, right. that's it's still closed as we record this. It's that? still closed. Yeah, yeah. So, my but plan, if not, my, we'll. My plan this summer was to 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 do Alaska, and that's postponed until uh, next year for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, that's our plan too. We want, we have two places we haven't done yet: Alaska, and I think you're the same as we are, Robert. Because I want to do Alaska, but I can't do it in two months. I need three closer to four months to do it because, you know, there's so much you want to see and do. We also want to do the Maritimes in Canada. And that's the same thing. That's about a three or four month trip. And so um, we had hoped to do Alaska. That was, that was tentatively on our idea. We thought there was even a possibility that we could do it, but that's not going to happen this year. And the Maritimes won't happen. So every so we, year, every year we want to go to Alaska. And then about four years ago, we were planning on going to Alaska and our children surprised us by giving us a puppy. That dog, Bo. And so yeah. that, uh, we weren't going to go to Alaska with a puppy. No. You know, we had to, we had to get a little, get him a little bit older. Mm -hmm. And then every year, all these obligations, you know, as you know, things pop up that are commitments. Yeah. So, so we keep trying. Yeah. yeah well, well, maybe next year we'll bump into each other up there. <laughs> uh, yeah. make as we usually nope. do, yeah. That, that, that was going to be one of my next questions. What what places you haven't been to yet that you that you haven't checked off that yeah. bucket list? And I, I guess you answered that one already. Yeah. Is your wife going to be able to go with you when you go to Alaska? Can she get out of work? By the by the this time next year, she'll probably be full time RVing with me as as well. Oh, okay. right. good. That's yeah. right. That's great. Because right now it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a mess with the with this uh, virus and everything else that's going on, and. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, of the national parks, are, are you like a national park buff? Uh, like, uh, yeah. What's, yeah. What, what are your favorites? Oh, man. Uh, it's, it's Notice really I said it in plural because it's impossible to yeah. say one, yeah. right? Which, which first one do you like? I know what you like first. Well, I like Zion. Zion. I mean, I always say Yellowstone because I think every person has to go to Yellowstone even though it's really crowded and you get in there and you're like an ant, you know, you're bumper to bumper. Mm -hmm. Yellowstone is uh, something to behold. 
Yeah, Yellowstone, and we go to that every every year at least, sometimes twice. And you like Zion? I like Zion. Yeah. Uh, I think mine is probably Glacier. I think it's just so dramatic. You know, it is uh, the landscape is so dramatic, and I, I really like La- Glacier. Uh, another one I like is uh, Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Doesn't get a lot of attention, but we have really fallen in love with that. We love the history of it about Roosevelt's time there. Mm -hmm. And then there's that little town of Medora just outside of it, which has their music hall every uh, summer, which is a, we, you know, the first time we went there, we, ah, we are interested in seeing that. Then we saw it and we thought, oh my goodness, that's another thing that we want to see every year. It's just such a quality production. So, um, and I just, I just love that Badlands that uh, up in uh, North Dakota Badlands, those Badlands, uh, South Dakotas are great too. I, but the North Dakota Badlands, it's just, they don't get quite the attention every place else does. And cause everybody's on their way to Yellowstone or Glacier. So we really like, uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. For some park. reason, nobody ever goes to North Dakota. That's like one of my, the last states that that I. Uh, we have think on my too. List. We love that. We lo- we usually love to take uh, I ninety eight and ninety four up at the north end of of North Dakota, go through that way, and it's a fascinating state, and it's so much room, so much room up there. Yeah. Yeah, that that's great. fingers crossed. That's on my plans for for this summer. Now that's my plan B after Alaska got canceled. Yeah. Um, changing the subject a little bit, um, what do you use like for travel planning? Do you have any special apps that that you use that uh, people may want to know about or Jennifer or websites? <laughs> uh, no, we used to use you know a couple of them, but. Uh, you know, it's just easier. We end up basically we ended up doing a video on it not long ago. We just I still like to have a hard, we like to have a map. So we have a, every year we buy a map uh, that folds out and it's the whole continental U.S. And that way you can just draw lines in it. Jennifer loves to take a pencil and mark a route. And then we've got a couple of books that we'll, we'll use, uh, ones of the national parks. If there's any national park anyway along the route, we want to budget time to go see it and explore it. Um, and then I, I use a lot on, you know, just, uh, on our apps, you know, on our smartphone. Um, I do a ton of stuff with that, but most of the time, uh, I don't think we have any travel planning. We did a couple, you know, cause you can have all sorts of stuff. We try and keep our travel to 330 miles a day. Mm-hmm. We very seldom make that. <laughs> Sometimes it's 330 at night <laughs> or in morning. the morning, in the morning. But um, I, I don't think we really use any travel aids, do we? No, we are no. We just kind of go for it. Yeah. Once we take off, we go. And, and what we have found is, if we plan at something, we like to kind of know what's in an area. But so much of what we find is serendipity and stuff that we just stumble upon. And uh, I think you do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And and you know, if we were focused on being in place A at a certain time, we wouldn't have time to pull off and see these cool things that are out there. So. So we don't do a lot of, uh, and we we don't do that anymore because we've been so upset that we had a reservation, we had to get someplace, and we were missing something, and it was was driving us crazy. And then we were wasting money because we had a reservation. So and we we didn't make it. So. When if when it's like a holiday weekend, there's some reason that you really got to have a reservation. We make it, but the rest of the time we figure we'll find something. And we always do. There's always some place to stay. Yeah, this, there's some of some, even, even at, at Yellowstone, you can find something last minute for com, first come, first serve. They have the, a couple of yep. campgrounds that, you know, they have those sites. And I, I shouldn't tell everybody this, but, you know, we, some of the best camping we've ever had are, is in those National Forest campgrounds. There's several of them right outside the north entrance of Yellowstone. There's the Gallatin National Park or National Forest and the west side of Yellowstone. And then you know, West Yellowstone has those massive campgrounds. They always have an opening if you pull up. So there's, there's very few places that you can't find a spot to stay. Yeah, my experience, that's my experience too. At the beginning, you know, it, it, we all learn along the, along the way. And I did the same thing. I made reservations here and there. And, and then I realized that everything takes longer when you're yes. in the RV. So you, oh. you're always <laughs> rushing to make it. And then you're you end up not seeing anything. Yep, that's our our experience too. So that's why we don't make reservations whenever we travel. Have you thought about RVing internationally? I know a lot of people do Europe and down under. No, I would not mind doing New Zealand or Australia. I think that would be kind of fun. I have no desire to go RVing in Europe. I've been to Europe uh, several times and 
Uh, I don't want to particularly RV there. There's so much here in North America and Canada that that it's the landscape. Mm-hmm. It's the job. That's I think what appeals to us. Yeah, mostly. we want beauty and peaceful and and room, wide open room. And the more we do this, the more we really like boondocking and being out away from everything. And um, and and you can do that so easily here. And we probably could in New. That's why I think. Um, you know, uh, Australia. Australia and New Zealand sound good because there's room out there to get, you know, there's elbow room out there. But mm-hmm. I don't particularly look forward to that long airplane ride. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, if you ever if you ever think about it, uh, Finland and Norway are great countries to RV and there's a lot of room up there too. I, yeah. I, I, I yeah. did those a couple of years ago. And uh, so, I, I mean, I, I, for me, sometimes I like to get away a little bit from the comfort zone and try to figure out supermarkets in a different language. That's always fun. Yeah. Let me tell you, <laughs> when you when you buy vinegar instead of oil because you couldn't understand the <laughs> the, 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 the language. That would be us. That would be us. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you um, because I know you guys do this this winter RVing every winter up in the in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. How, how do you pull that off? How do you pull that off if, if if you don't have like a four season RV? Because because I, I I made this commitment to never winterize my trailer. So. Well, you do have to winterize it. That's a good commitment to have, by the yeah. way. <laughs> you do have to winterize to do that because it gets pretty cold. But. It does. And uh, we just did it one year by ourselves. And then the next year we said, well, let's invite whoever wants to come to come. And we've been doing that for, what, seven years now? You know, that first year we did it, Robert, we <laughs> we were, it was seven below zero the first morning we woke up. Ouch. Seven below zero Fahrenheit. And I was feeling really, look at us, because we were very comfortable, you know, and you've, you flush your toilet with antifreeze because you've winterized your unit, but other, and you don't have running water. But other than that, it's the same with everything else. So I looked out the window, and, and, I, and I'm just saying to Jennifer, and I see all the snow, and I'm looking out one window, and I said, seven, to Belize, seven degrees below zero, and look at us out here. And she says, don't get so cocky, look next door. And next door was a tent, oh. and it was a couple on their honeymoon <laughs> in the tent. So And there was another tent as well. Yeah, we so found people that. were tenting. So it's all what you're used to. Yeah. And uh, it's fun. It's just it's just like you just wear more clothes when you go outside. Everything else is is pretty much exactly the same. You have big fires, we cook out, uh, we eat around the fire, we gather around the fire and it's uh we easily end up with about 50 people. We we could probably do 200, but we, whenever we have a gathering of our own, we always limit it to 50 because that's about the limit we have found where we can actually meet everybody and get to know everybody. So we keep it that way. Yeah, one of these days, I'm going to join you. It's going to be the one and only time I'll, I'll winterize. <laughs> you know, it's fun. Well, everybody would know, love to if see you're you going to come, you should go into Minnesota and uh, some of the uh, dog races, the mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Make a trip out that of it. That is fun. Uh, and uh, Minnesota up by oh. Lake Superior in the wintertime. Oh, is that beautiful. We camped one night out there. We were, uh, You're a ham radio operator. Yeah, I had volunteered to uh, help out at a, uh, at a sled dog race. And we camped out in the middle of nowhere, up near Finland, Minnesota, almost the Canadian border, not far from Lake Superior. The temperature, the real temperature got down to 21 below zero. And uh, the wind chill was like minus. The wind chill, yeah, it was just unbelievable. And uh, we were as comfortable as can be in there. And uh, it was funny because we had a different dog then, and we took the dog out to do his thing at night. I took him out, bundled up, took me five minutes to get all the clothes out. It was so cold. He went out and he wanted to go right back in. He was acting weird. And I think, well, I guess it's too cold for the dog. And our dogs are like sled dogs, you know, so. Norwegian elk hounds. But it turned. Made for snow. But it turned out there was a pack of wolves out there. <laughs> he had more sense yeah. than we did. And it, when Don came, somebody else, another volunteer came for that race. And they said, did you see him? And I said, what? This is the wolves all around us. And later on, we heard him howling nearby. So, so, but that was just so It was awesome. a great adventure. It was a great adventure. Yep. One of these days, one of these days. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I think, I think <laughs> we don't have salt on that winter camping yet. I think your northerners have a little more tolerance than than us. You know, I was born in the Caribbean and I lived in Florida for 30 years. So I don't know. But yeah. I, I want to experience it one of these days. It's, um, it's, it's worth it. I wanted to change the subject a little bit more into the, since you're a technology reporter as well. And this is something that this, the, the eternal struggle of all of us who are on the road. What do you do for internet? Uh, do you have anything that is reliable, unlimited? And uh... um, you know, I've had I have everything up on the roof. I have 
two WineGuard systems, one on AT&T and one on Verizon. I have the Verizon MiFi card. Uh, you know, we have our, our iPhones. I have uh, a WeBoost uh, cell phone booster. And I have uh, also a satellite dish for Dish TV, uh, which will work so I can watch movies. We can stream them over the internet. Mm -hmm. But uh, all things aside, uh, there's no need for almost any of that stuff except for that MiFi card. We have found now in when we first started, I needed backup and I needed the cell phone booster. But now uh, I think there were two occasions in the last year where I did not have a strong enough signal to get reliable internet uh, with the, just the, the MiFi card, not even using the cell phone booster. Uh, so that's why I have AT&T and Verizon. And one of those systems was just a couple of weeks ago before the shutdown, a couple months ago now, we were at the uh, Flamingo Park, Flamingo uh, Campground at uh, Everglades National Park, mm -hmm. not too far from you at the very, very southern eastern end of the Everglades. And uh, the, uh, there was no Verizon signal there. There was an AT&T. But that's the only time in the last year I've, not, I've had trouble you know, getting a signal on just the MiFi card. Uh, so all that stuff said, uh, MiFi has been 99.5% uh, solid and reliable for us. Uh, and that's changed. You know, when we first started the network was very spotty and it wasn't 4G, it was 3G, which is very slow. And to do this kind of video and, and to, you know, you need a pretty good connection. And we've had no problems finding them, even in some of the most remote places of the country now. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. I, you know, you know, I'm that guy that I bought that Togo device that they sold. Uh, I have one of those too. Yeah. They <laughs> and now AT&T pulled, pulled the, 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 the cord, Yeah. So. Well, we got taken by that one, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. we did. And, you know, I, I was like, yeah, 30 bucks a month. That's awesome. You know, but you pay it yearly. And I only used it for three, four months. So I ended up paying about $100 a month, which is not, not a great yeah. deal. Yeah, I have it too. And, and uh, now it like, I, you know, they're talk that Togo or was going to make it uh, work on other networks. So you could get a Verizon uh you know, the Sprint T-Mobile merger, if that ever happens, that's going to be a viable option mm -hmm. to combine. They have a pretty good network. But uh, at this point, I think that device is just a yeah. piece of yeah. white junk. It's, isn't the, 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 you know about this thing. Isn't like Sprint and and um, and, and, uh, oh, and T-Mobile like totally different technologies? Isn't T-Mobile like GSM uh, and Sprint was PCS back yeah, in the day? I don't but, know what they have now. But I, but I think they've, they're going to somehow change that and make it one. I don't know which one it will be, but uh, we'll have to wait for 5G if, if anything. Yeah. 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 And that's coming quick. You know, that's going to change everything in two years, three years. And then the technology that is really exciting is this low orbiting satellite technology. Yeah. The Elon that, Musk. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Starlink or something like that. Right. Well, it, I think, I don't know what he calls it. Starlink. I think it is that, but, um, we, we tested out an antenna a couple of years ago made by a company called Chimeta, which is looks like a pizza box, but it's a flat antenna and it automatically tracks all the satellites. And it's just really a powerful. So you can, while you're on the go, it's constantly tracking them. But that new network is what that's made for. And the new network will be uh, faster than any broadband we, we can get anywhere, except maybe uh, the highest business service you can find. And that's about ready to kick in. Those satellites are up and the network is functioning. And now they just got to get the gear. It'll probably be very expensive for the first two or three years. But once that, um, that scale comes up, that's going to be, you know, in five years, I would think that's going to be. Can you imagine getting fast internet anywhere on the, on the planet? Oh, that would be, uh, yeah. That's the dream, yeah. right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It'll be faster uh, than even yeah. most uh, broadband. Uh, astronomers are not very happy about it because it's going to, like, there's so many satellites. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be bad I, for, for, astrophotography yeah. in it, but yeah it's yeah well you know you'll have all these streaks going across all of our videos <laughs> yeah. Yeah. talk about technology uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the gear that you use for uh for audio as well as as video i, I see you i see you're using road mics but and i'm a road yeah. fan as well but uh, what else do you use you know the biggest thing i have i don't know if this will work if you get can you see that right there is that the roadcaster that is the best piece I've ever bought. That's the Roadcaster, and uh, it is an, just an amazing piece of technology. Uh, 
it, it'll handle four different microphone inputs. Uh, it'll do Bluetooth with a phone conversation to record. Uh, it does, I was going to show you something else it does. Uh, I don't know if this will play. Does this show up here? This is, yeah. uh, that's my stream deck. And uh, that allows me to run, uh, run videos. Uh, like uh, I can do something like, uh, let's see if this will work. Uh, nope, it doesn't work because I'm not. Oh, I'm not hooked up to it. Right. I, I know when you do your live streams, you do like a, like you, 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 you do like an intro and that kind of thing. So that, that's yeah, what you, and you, you can do like a, you can show a video, you can put up, uh, you know, graphics. So I use all of that and that road thing fits into a nice little suitcase with these two mics. And what else do we have? Um, I got a new camera back there. That's my new camera. I just yeah, what do you have back up. there? Yeah. I've, I've been seeing that. That is the new, uh, Canon, uh, R the mirrorless Canon. I do. On the, this table, where is it? Right, I can't. Let's see if I can show that one. Where? Nope, I can't find it. It's another. I use the Canon MC. Uh, in, in, no, EOS 50. I think it is M50. That's what it was. I used that up until uh, I just replaced it with this new Canon R. And then you know, the iPhone is just phenomenal. Yeah, uh, phenomenal video and audio. So, and that's changing all the time. Yeah, we, we're yeah. living in a great time of technology-wise. Now they have this phone that it has like a periscope, so they can have a longer lens, so you can zoom in into yeah. like... Yeah, I yeah. think it's just the I'm new Samsung, it and probably Apple is going to come up with something like that yeah. as well. You know, it's... It, we're living in great times. We're living in the, we're living in the like future. It's like we do, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. But that road, uh, uh, the the Podcaster Pro is what they call it. That is just uh, such a such a powerful little device It plays all my little audios and little in intros and you can have, it, it can have a really production uh, quality. Uh, can you have like compressor case. gate and equalizer and all that stuff? All that stuff. Everything's oh, on it. Big, yeah, you don't you know, remember 20 years ago, you would need a rack of, of equipment to do yeah. some of this stuff. Well, even in ours, I mean, I had to have a big mixer and I had to have all these, all this stuff that I carried with me. And this is all so much easier now. Yeah. It's good. Really, it's, it's a great time to 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 be alive and and, and see all this technology evolving yep. and in an RV. Yeah. In an RV, yeah. It's it. Everything is so small now that we we can get away with. Um, well, I'm gonna start wrapping this up. Uh, it's been great chatting with you guys. I really enjoyed, by the way, your video about Key West a couple of uh, weeks ago. You well, know, Key, you. Key West fun. has been my backyard for all my life, pretty much. You are a lucky man. It is such a great spot. It really is. So, and you're whole... doing all this, all these guides that that's what, what you're doing. How do you find the time? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> we work a lot, but we, do, you know, we, we, we kind of set a schedule and you do a little bit here, a little bit there, and then you automate it. You make everything a system. And it's kind of like you, uh, just before I came on with you, we just recorded our podcast interview for tomorrow. And so you kind of do everything on the same two days. And then, uh, Wednesdays, my, I, I start to edit videos Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then uh, I always try and write a little bit in the mornings. And Basically, you work all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of it. I can relate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like all of us, we all do that. So yeah, you but, but, like, I'm sorry, Jennifer? You, you have to like what you do. Yeah. Like, Exactly. That, that's the only way that we can work so much because if we didn't like this, we, 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 it would be impossible. It um, would be. So you have the, 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 you're doing the Florida guide. Which other guides do you have? We have three guides on Florida. We have one on Yellowstone. We have one on Colorado. We have one on Utah. We have one on the Adirondacks. Uh, we have one on uh, Michigan's Upper. Upper Peninsula. And I think that's seven. That's the seven. And we've got uh, the Key West one. We have one just on Key West that's coming out. I'll announce it on our, uh, we do a Sunday night live thing on YouTube and I'll announce it next Sunday night. It's going to be available. That's all. It's at the designer right now. So. And when can uh, people get those? Uh, you, you have a that'll website. Be start Sunday night, Sunday night, but um, rvlifestyle.com slash books. And you can see all the guides we do. And that's been really fun. Cause I love, I love to write. I love graphics and I love, photos and uh, and I love video so the beauty of an ebook is you can do all of that in an ebook so are you thinking do of doing like a long form book in the future no I've, I've written a bunch of books in my my journalism career I've written six books and, uh, it's too it's crazy you know uh, by the time it is published it's way out of date 
and uh, you know the publisher and the distributors and the bookstores and Amazon. They take so much of it that you know a thirty dollar book. You know the author's lucky to make two dollars. So we can we can put a book out for seven dollars, uh, and um, there's really no middle person involved in it. And it, it you know like our travel guides. So that's. It, it's, it's just dealing directly with people is always better. And that's, I think, the neat thing about the internet. And that's why, you know, you're so popular and, and uh, all the other people who do this is because people are tired of the traditional media and the traditional entertainment form. They, they want more choice. They, and this allows us all to have a niche and uh, uh, develop audiences. And this is an exciting time to be in, in any kind of media right now. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. I feel like we're in a little bit of a timeout think period. But yeah, right now. <laughs> think and plan. Yeah, it is. Like, would you say it's like being a kid in, in timeout? Your know, parents make you sit in timeout because, <laughs> okay, now what are we going to do? Six weeks, seven weeks into this? You know, I don't think any of us realized how spoiled that we are and the freedom that we have to go and travel and dream. And, you know, we just took that for granted. Yeah, I think we but did. Yeah. Coming back. Hopefully. I mean, we, it's, been, it's been uncertain for about a month. A little more, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how much of it we get back if we if we get all of it back. <laughs> we open our beaches up here on Friday for a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours at night. I don't know about down by you whether they're open, and then the hope is they'll open them right after that. Again. If everybody pays, they'll be open longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Miami is such a highly populated area that I think we're going to be like last in Florida, yeah, Miami and Fort Lauderdale, but. Uh, I, I'd probably be heading up uh, uh, north before before yeah. that happens. Well, Mike and Jennifer, it's been great having you on the podcast. It's been my my honor and my pleasure to have you here. Um, yes. You're one of our favorite uh, people out there, Robert. We usually see you at just about every RV show. And uh, besides California, we were... are you going to do any, any RV shows yeah, this year? Are you coming to California? No, nah, probably not. Probably not. Uh, that's in August, is it? No, in October. Oh, October first. October first. I, I don't know. I'm. I think I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna. Go to, I'm, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I, this thing is. Uh, it's not full duplex. I don't think. I can't hear you. What you say? I say I gotta get. I gotta talk to you about California. You would like California. That's a great RV show. I was. We've been now. This will be our third year. We have really. No, our fourth year. And we have. We have really found it. So probably our, as as neat as Tampa is. So. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll, this year, I'll, maybe, maybe this year I'll make it that way. We'll see. I was thinking of Hershey, and from from Hershey to California is a long way, but we'll see. We're gonna give up Hershey this year, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? All right. And uh, where, where can people find you if if they, they if they don't know? Um... RVLifestyle.com that links to everything that we do. RVLifestyle.com and uh, they'll find us. All right, Mike and Jennifer, thank you for being on the podcast. Podcast and uh, see you on the road, as I usually say. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Riding, riding in my 